Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another word-filled message by David Entry. Preaching is the means by which God manifests his word and nourishes our spirits. May the life of God enter into you and you as you listen to this message. Be blessed. You know, there is something that happens in your life when you frequent the place of prayer. Something happens when you frequent the place of prayer. When you pray, something, somebody doesn't have to call you to tell you the answer is coming. How many of you have prayed and got the answers before and it was kind of surprising and kind of interesting how many of us have. You prayed about something and you got the answer. And you're, this, this thing is cool, man. But at the time you were praying, you just released your faith and kept praying. See, when you pray and the answers are coming, you wouldn't know they are coming, how they will come. The only thing, the only confidence you have in prayer is your faith. Apart from that, there's nothing scientific, nothing physical that tells you the answer is coming, when it's coming, how it's coming, in what manner is it going to come. You just pray and your faith is hooked on the goodness of God. Now, when you go you, when you frequent, please mark my words well, frequent. When you frequent a place of prayer, something definitely begins to change for your good. Anybody who frequents a place of prayer, because a place of prayer is a, a platform for God, a dimension of God. You know, so anytime you Keep frequenting a place of prayer. You are always there. You there. You are there. You don't have to feel it. It doesn't have to look like things are changing. But I tell you, a lot is happening. Yeah. A lot happened. You know, when you are drinking Coke or <laughs> eating junk food and they tell you it's not good for your health, if you drink, some of us here, when we drink Coke, we'll react. Okay, so that's why you don't drink coke and there are certain junk food some people when they eat they react like ice cream yeah I know some of you your, your system is built for <laughs> but when something can damage your health food I'm not talking about reaction but it has the propensity to damage your health. You don't really know when it's damaging. You, you just keep drinking the Coke and every day two pints. Or is there two, two uh, liters? You don't even realize you are getting addicted. You don't, you just, you know, most times, sometimes, not only bad, any addiction. When you start, you know you are in control. Usually, and when the thing takes over you, takes control, you still feel you are in control. Like people, people who fornicate a lot, like whether a lot or small. <laughs> there are people who go, no, no, it won't happen. I'm going to his house. It won't happen. I'm going. I'm meeting her. It won't happen. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? But before you could say Jack, it's worse. It's been worse than ever. Because most of the time. Most of the times, we deceive ourselves to think we are in control. What addiction, what addiction does is it takes over your will. It's like a certain plant called ivy. They are serious parasitic plants. That's what happens with addiction. You don't realize the point where you got hooked up. It, it never announces to you, you are getting hooked up, you are getting, you just realize that I'm beginning to like this in more than, more than usual. But before you even get there, you feel that, I, no, I like it, but I can't stop it. And you always convince yourself, it's me. I, I can't I can stop it. We are in a relationship. If we, I decide that we are not going to have fornication, we won't. I, I can, I, but it, you can't. You can't, I'm telling you. 
You've been saying, if I want to stop the masturbation, I'll stop. But you haven't. <laughs> you say, oh, me, I just do it when I want to. But if I'm really serious, I dare you. Stop it then. That means that the thing has taken over your will. So the day you want to activate and exercise your will, you realize that you, you don't got it. You don't have the will. That's what addiction does. In the same way, when you frequent a place of prayer, something is happening without you realizing that something good. Uh, oh, I'm, to, I'm talking about some great things are happening in people's lives. Yes. Something good. You show me someone who frequents a place of prayer and another person who doesn't and give their medical record over a period of time. Let's say they all have a particular illness. Over a period of time, see who will deteriorate. See who will deteriorate. And it, it will shock you that normally anybody who has this kind of problem, after this period of time, this will happen to them. But because that period of time has been spent frequenting a place of prayer, by the end of the season, the, the outcome and the result is different from the normal case. When you frequent a place of prayer, you are changing something without realizing. That's what I'm talking about. You can't be a cheap victim in life frequenting places of prayer. No. I, watch my words. I didn't say praying. I said frequenting a place of prayer. So you can bring a child here and the child is not praying. The child, but is frequenting the, when they had prayed, the place where they stood shook. It's not the people. There's something about the place of prayer. You carry something. Once we begin to pray, two or three are gathered in my name. Bam, there's something here. It's called the Shakana glory. It shows up. It shows up. He shows up. He has committed himself and he won't change. So that once he's in my name, I'm there. And the more, so the intensity of the presence is determined by the heart, the hunger, and the focus of the people who have gathered. And yes, of course, the, when I say the heart, it means that sometimes historic situations can also help. Let's say if a whole week you've consecrated yourself praying personally or you are not quarreling, you are not gossiping on the things, your weakness, a whole week or two weeks and five of you come together and start praying within an hour, the manifestation will be wilder than somebody and a who are living normal life going and watching everything doing normal not even seeing it living normal life but have not you know what I'm saying let alone somebody who is also people who are also sinning and then coming oh God forgive me sinning and come that when they also gather the atmosphere is different so the intensity of the atmosphere is determined by the condition of the hearts so six people here They've been fasting for two weeks. Four people here, they've not been reading their Bible. They've been living normal lives, drinking and, you know, whatever. Sometimes sinning and other things come in. And then we have uh, seven people here who come about it. Once in a while they come to church. If they gather to pray, okay, let's say they are sinners here, people who have been committing sin, God forbid, you know. And then this one, they don't care. But this one's, and this one, for one month, they've just been spending time with God. If the six plus four plus these 17 people, if they come together in prayer, it won't take too much. Because of the intensity here, it to spread something. Suddenly, you see, these people start crying. They start feeling God. I'm, I'm a sinner. I don't. And then suddenly, these people begin to feel, I want to, I, I don't know why I've not been mistaking God. Because they came with something, these ones will not be too strong to dilute what they are carrying. That's what prayer does. Prayer enhances and amplifies the righteous state of a heart within an atmosphere. So let's say even if two people come in, the two, if they can have a certain leverage in the atmosphere, by the time you realize the big thing is beginning to spread. Now, two come and the prayer is three hours. And two come, or the prayer is one hour. Two come, the two have been waiting on God. They come early. Start praying at 30 minutes before. The others join for the one hour. 
before the others come, something has got, they, they've created. So it's not leading that creates the influence, but it is a certain, uh, uh, um, you know, taking the lead. There's a difference between taking the lead and leading. Okay, there are, there are people who are not, who are supposed to be leading, but they are not taking the lead. So you can be standing here leading prayer, but you yourself, you have not been praying. And somebody can be sitting there and he's been praying, he's been praying and waiting on the name of God. He comes in, the prayer starts before you even come up. As he's praying, because of his intensity, it will draw something, the presence of God on the place, even though you are, he's not the one leading. When you frequent the place of prayer, your life doesn't remain the same. And I'm su submitting to you that things are changing more, more radically than you think. Yeah. It's only unbelievers who want to see before they believe. That's why they are unbelievers. What makes us believers is we believe what God's word is saying. We are our conviction in God's word. Even if we have not seen. So Jesus said in Matthew, sorry, John. John chapter 20 verse uh, uh, um, 20, um, somewhere there, 28, 26, 27, somewhere there, where they were praying in the room, and then Jesus showed up. He said, John chapter 20, yeah. He came and he said, blessed are you who have, been, who have not seen yet believing. So, there is an advantage in believing God, even though scientifically it doesn't show, but spiritually you have the evidence Please don't stop frequenting the, place, uh, frequenting the place of prayer. Pay a price. Uh, is it not interesting? Someone wants to be a surgeon, but he wants to live the way a nurse lives. <laughs> you want to be a Navy SEAL, is it? Um, SAS, SOS, SES, SES. Or, or uh, in America, Marine. Or you want to be a commando. You know, even the, the police officers who carry firearms, their training is different from the ones who have been working in uh, shopping center. <laughs> 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 and the police who work in shopping center, their training is different from the community police. Community police, they are not actual police. So, but it's, it's, it's based on the training. The reason why a doctor is paid more than the nurse is the training. It's not the hours they work. <laughs> a surgeon doesn't have to work nine or eight hours a day. Sometimes he may even have to work 24 hours a week, three days. He will earn more than someone who is working 12 hour shifts, seven days. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one day, one day, some people, their daily rate, their daily rate is like somebody's weekly rate and other people's monthly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, what causes that to happen is the background work you put in. So, you want results in life but not putting in effort. You are making a mistake. <laughs> you are making a mistake. Thinking that you can get certain results without corresponding input. It's a, it's, a, it's a joke. Some of us, you see, you don't have much time for God. Like the way you should. Considering the things that are following you. Or considering your history, things you have done, your mother cursed you because of the problems you brought to her before she died. You should be someone who must always be in the place of prayer. Yeah. Because the curse is still pending. Yeah. A curse cannot easily be overruled or overridden by any scientific or any human desire. No. It will take usually maybe a prophetic declaration or a certain pursuit that as you pursue the things of God within a certain sphere, it suspends the efficacy. 
or the manifestation. So it's not going to, it's there. But you are so much in church, some things, you let some people, let them leave church and see what will happen. I'm, I'm not even going to church. I'm not even going to church. You, you quickly forget your family history. Yeah. You quickly forget you yourself, things you have done and you are wanted in the demonic world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You collected people's husbands. You collected people's wives. You slept with... Yeah. You think those things don't come with replications? Oh. No, don't be deceived. You, 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 you rape somebody. You should be someone who never could rebel against church. Because the case has not been opened. Even if, <laughs> even if the police doesn't at, uh, visit the case, destiny will. Destiny will. God, let me put this. Let me tell you how, not me, how God put it. He said, don't be deceived, Galatians 6, 7. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You can yeah, No. You reap what you have sold. So guess what? Things you have sold are ready to be reaped. Oh yeah. No, no, no. You see? Hey, please. <laughs> I don't know what you have sown. I don't know what your mother has sown. Mm. So don't be deceived. No, how do you start a statement with don't be deceived? In other words, it's very easy to think it won't happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got a letter from the phone company that you owe. It's you there. He said, oh, and then you throw it away. He said, oh, don't be deceived. <laughs> don't be deceived. Uh, some of us here, let me tell you, your credit history is so bad but you have not attempted to rise, so you don't know how much it can hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. You attempt to lift your head. No one will hit you. Already the thing has been planted. It will pull you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. History. Credit history. And things that record that the police has about you, which they have not acted on. <laughs> Oh yeah. Your family name is different from the one on your passport. <laughs> the original family name. <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand when listen, you come when you when you come to a church environment, especially where God is, when people are talking rubbish, don't be quick to join them. Or if you want to join them, just check your history. Yeah, and decide. No, oh, no, this is me. I can't be going to church because the quality is too far away. Oh, I can't be going. You really agree with them, but you, you can't. You can. Yeah. Yeah. For all you may know, this thing has been put together by God because He wants to show you mercy. So that God has done His bit. You to do your bit. What's your bit? Frequent. Frequent. God is not saying do something exceptional. Just like the way they told him, go and wash in the Jordan. He said, why should I wash him? Is that a banner and Papha no better? In 2 Kings chapter 5. How, how can I go and he doesn't respect me? But you are still leper. You are leper. You are still leprous. You came to the prophet and he didn't see you. And he said, go and wash. Just an instruction. The power of the prophet is in his words. No, his friendship. No, it's friendship. It's in his words. And when God wants to help you, he will, he will let the prophet speak a word and now leave you to obey. I am trying to help you to maximize the goodness of God in your life. There are things, listen, there are things you have to know and do. There are things you have to know and do. Things don't happen. Things that happen by chance is like weeds. Leave your garden unattended. Weeds will come by. If you want flowers, a nice lawn, and it's, it's a bit of work. It depends on the size of your garden and what kind of things you want to grow. That's why in my garden, because I don't want to do the work, I make sure I put astral turf. And when we do 
Ask pastor, all the flowers you see, not one of them is proper flower. <laughs> not even one. I made sure I got rid of every other thing that would make me work for them to look nice. I got rid of them. Got rid of them and have this. It looks the same all season. Whether summer, whether winter, it's blows on me. The same. <laughs> But it doesn't have life. If a leaf falls from it, that's it. It can never come back with time. It's, but the ones that are attended, taking care of, the leaf falls more, will come and they keep producing. Your relationship with God must be dynamic. There are things to do. And one of the things I'm telling you is learn how to frequent yourself in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer in the place of prayer. It's not for the pastor. When you come and we are praying, connect and pray. You know, I have not even preached my message. I feel like preaching. <laughs> Is someone learning something? Because, you see, if you are not told these things, you will be, those many years when I got to London, my school was in, um, not in Hillgate, bus 12 from Peckham to um, Oxford Street. In fact, I used to go to Notting Hillgate, and sometimes a new guy in town, I get down on Oxford Street to look at staff there. So one day, I got there, I was jumping. But you know, when you come out of the shop, you are, you are forgotten. Is this left or right, which direction. So I just saw the bus stop coming and I jump on it. No, no, it was taking me <laughs> to a different. <laughs> I, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. I'm not getting to bus stop. So I asked, is it not going to, is it not, I said, yeah, bus stop, okay, bus stop, okay, let's start on it. <laughs> After a while, you know, those days it was the one you just enter. I realized that no, these stops are familiar. They're familiar stops. So I felt like it was okay. But after a while, I realized, no. So I was coming, I was, they're taking me back home. <laughs> so you might think you are on the good train, or right, you know, the train to, sometimes you are in a hurry. Southbound, northbound. You don't understand what it means. It's just, it's just a train. That's my train. <laughs> Especially the tube. You had the hurry before the door shuts. You enter the door shuts, then you realize, oh no, I'm on the, I'm on the wrong train. <laughs> now my, I'm trying to help you to disembark the wrong train. Potentially, you might be on the wrong train thinking it is going to your destination. Then later you say, God has let you down. It didn't work, it didn't work. You didn't make it work because you should have done it right. I, I, am, I not, am I not talking? We have to Help, watch this. Some people, if you don't teach them, they will never know. As much as their hearts are genuine, they will never know because of where they are coming from. They were practically yanked out from like a lion's den. So we have to make the ways of God plain to people. Someone must teach you. Then if you have a stubborn heart, then you don't want to listen. Then you invalidate your potential in God. When you frequent the place of prayer, when you frequent the place of prayer, you expose yourself to what God can do. Don't forget that. When you frequent the place of prayer, you expose yourself to what God can do. And God can do what man cannot do. Now, in our reading today, I don't know those of you who have been reading the Ezra thing, but this Ezra thing is very interesting. It tells you what God can do. God, ah, nobody can legislate against God. Oh. And I noticed that in Ezra chapter 4, towards the end, I think about the last three chapters of the end, these guys in chapter 1, the king has given instruction because God has moved his heart, go and build. Ezra went, 
with some people. They were busy building. Then suddenly some people came and said, hey, who, who told you to be building this thing? Stop it. And they, 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 they went to the king and sought an injunction that no one, so towards the end of chapter four, but the last three verses, the last three verses, Uh, yeah, the, the, go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. Now, when the copy of Atazazel's letter was read, before Rehum, Shimshai, don't, don't use this name so. <laughs> Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem against the Jews. Shimshai the scribe. They went up in haste against the Jews and by, f- by force of arms made them cease. They, s- they were building the, uh, Jerusalem. They, they went by force and with ammunition made them cease. You can't go ahead. Stop work, yeah. Produce permits. <laughs> yeah. They, they stopped them. But what, were they doing anything wrong? No. And they, what they were doing, they were not breaking a law. They have been given the permission. The king has sp- sponsored them. They had the permit and everything. But Satan didn't like it. So they stopped them. But I like the beginning of chapter 5. Thank God for the voice of the prophet. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, son of Edo, prophets, Prophesy to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Oh, who told you you'll be a chief victim? Let the enemy do his worst. God will still do his best for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let, may I tell you, those of you who, who are told this, good things like this don't happen in our family. Marriages don't happen or good marriages don't happen. And you can tell it's true. But your case is different. Yeah. I'm prophesying over you. <laughs> I'm prophesying to you. Yes, 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 yes. It says, Haggai and Zechariah, son of Israel, prophets, prophesy to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God who was over them. God was over and they prophesied in the name of God. That's why it's good to frequent yourself in the place of prayer. Because per adventure there might be a prophetic statement. Yeah. In the name of God who is over you. Never think you are wasting your time when you come here. Because what would you have been doing? Watching TV. (laughs) The The next one. The next statement. (laughs) <laughs> then, then the oh so Zerubbabel the son of Sheetiel and Jeshua the son of Zadok rose up and began to build the house of God which is in Jerusalem and the prophets of God were with them helping them hallelujah shout hallelujah they started doing what was prohibited in the sight of men. But they had their rights from God. They, were, they all stopped building by the force of arm. We saw it. By the force of arm, they were made to cease. But prophets rose and the prophets, two of them, they prophesied over, the, over them. They prophesied to them. And after they prophesied, Zerubbabel, son of Shietel, and Joshua, they arose and began to build the prophets helping them. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You will build. Yes. You will build. Yes. You will build. Yes. I announce to you and I prophesy anything that has been forced to cease. Any good thing that God was building and developing in your life that has been forced to cease through the pandemic or through any circumstance, through any situation, anything that has been forced to cease, I bring it back to life. I prophesy back to action. I prophesy back to action. I prophesy back to action. In the name of Jesus, shout amen. Amen. Stay in the line of the prophet. 
And they started to build. As soon as they started to build, the guys came. Verse four, verse, verse three. They came and said, who has commanded you to, to build the temple and finish the wall? You are not supposed to do that. Somebody will challenge you when you take a stand for God. It, there's no stand for God that will go unchallenged in this fallen world. But it doesn't mean you are doing something wrong. The fact that they are speaking against you, the fact that they are taking a stand against you, doesn't mean you are doing something wrong. So, the hand of God, verse 5, the eyes of God was upon them. And so they said, we won't stop, we'll continue. They said, because the King Darius, there's a document backing what we are doing. They chose to take their stand. And once you take your stand, God fights for you. Some of us, we easily, easily cave in. You usually give up. So God doesn't even get a chance to back you. So they took their stand. And they said, okay, then let's write. They wrote a letter to the king Cyrus. Darius. They wrote the letter that when Cyrus was on, please check the records. Check the records. Because these guys are saying that the decree has been passed by Cyrus. But we don't have it. We don't know about it. So check the records. So when you, the, letters, the letter went to the king, I think chapter 6 from verse 1 or so, they made a thorough search. Yeah. And the king Darius issued a decree and search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon. Oh, God is initiating something for you. You don't say amen and look that cool. I said, God is initiating something for you. And very soon it will start to speak. Very soon it will start to speak. In the name of Jesus. And to cut long story short, they found a letter. They found a decree and the, the content of the decree was amazing. That is in chapter 7. They, huh, I can't believe. He says, the king said, get gold and silver as much as you want. And go from the treasury of the kingdom. Get it. And go and build a house for your God. Yeah. And he says that when you finish, amongst the Jews, ask anyone who is, who, or is free will, anyone who is willing, as much as they can, collect the gold. And he says something. He said, when you collect the gold, go and use it to build, build the, uh, the house of God. And when you finish, use some to buy food and everything for the people who are working. And then when you finish, whatever is left, use it the way you want. Yeah. Upon the... Uh, uh, Well, it's a, yeah, without limit. To. This is what is proper, unlimited. Yeah. How oh, it says unlimited usage. <laughs> what verse is that? And the verse, verse um, let's look at from verse um, 17. Wow. Now, therefore, be careful to buy with this money bulls, rams, and lambs with their grains, offerings, and drink offerings. Oh, sorry. Yeah, with their grains, offerings, and drink, and their drink offerings, and offer them on the altar of your God in Jerusalem. <laughs> you go and do it for your God. Hey. When God starts prevailing on people on your, on your behalf, it's going to be beautiful. It's just so, I'm telling you, it's just so. Look at the verse 18. Verse 18. And Whatever seems good to you and your brethren to do with the rest of the money, ah, do according. To. So he said, Do it, but make sure you are not disobeying God. Yeah. If it seems good for you, go ahead, make sure you are in there. If the, uh, this is not a Jew, a heathen king telling them, Collect money when you finish the rest, you and your brethren, whatever seems to do it. Don't forget what God uses the prophets to do. The prophets prophesied. Haggai prophesied. And Zechariah, they prophesied. And the people were able to get up to do what? Because there was a prophetic word. God did it. God did it. Did, 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 you, did we even read the verse 6? Oh, verse 14 to 
Okay, verse 14. Let's before we come to chapter 6, uh, chapter 7. No, no, no. Chapter 6, verse 14, please. So the elders of the Jews built and they prospered throughout. Uh, so thorough, uh, through the prophet. Ah, ah, yes. <laughs> Jale? <laughs> They, they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophets, and Zechariah, the son. That's exactly what I was saying. And they built and finished it according to the commandment of God, the God of Israel, and according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius, and Atazazes, kings of Persia. They finished it. They prospered. The prophet, they, by her, so people were prophes- uh, uh, prospering through prophesying. You see how much things can cost you when you don't know how God works. You can easily walk away from a prophet to go on a retreat. Go and seek the face of God. Meanwhile, there's a prophet. The other time I was saying, I think last year, you're saying, God, where are you? God, where are you? You have abandoned the prophet he sent in your life. And you have gone doing 40 days fasting, seeking his face. You are wasting your time. Start eating and just go to the prophet. And <laughs> yeah, eat and listen. Eat, <laughs> eat energy and listen to the prophet. You see how a lot of people don't understand how God works. We have created a certain God that fits our own ideologies. We've created a God for ourselves. So we have, we have projected our understanding. So most people, especially in United Kingdom and in the West, everywhere anyway, everywhere, the God, that is why you can't afford to be in a church where you are not taught. You know, last, uh, Second Peter, last Sunday, it says, watch this, this is very important. He said, uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you according to the knowledge of what? God and of the two. He mentioned, you see? Uh, uh, no, no, verse, verse, verse two. Grace and peace be multiplied according to the knowledge of God and of our, Jesus, our Lord Jesus, Jesus our Lord. So, of God, you must know what, what we mean when we are talking about God. And you must also understand what, what we mean when we talk about Jesus. So you don't end up saying that uh, it's the same Jesus the Muslims are talking about. You must know Jesus. You don't end up saying it's the same God. So you have to have a comprehensive knowledge of God. That's what God did before Jesus came. Through the Jews. He was helping humanity to have a, an understanding of the God of heaven who created everything. So they don't go and make idols and say, project deity on it and say this is how God is. No. God will tell you who he is. How he is. And people come to church with a certain limited and skewed and unhealthy understanding of God. So I don't, I'm upset with God because I paid my tithe. He didn't help me. You are very ignorant and I didn't want to say you are not unwise. The other way, proper way of saying an unwise person is... You, you don't want to serve God. In what way does it affect him? It's like you want to change this, the color of this room with your forehead. Scratch. <laughs> change. Who suffers? It's not the, the room. Oh no. You even get anywhere. You'll be bleeding. God. Prophets were prophesying and they were prospering. <laughs> yeah. This is powerful. That's why it's just, it's just like Romans 6. For, there are some scriptures. It's 6.14. 6.14 are interesting. Romans 6.14 talks about sin which cannot have dominion over us. But don't go there. So Ezra 6.14. Yeah. Don't forget Ezra 6.14. He said, so the elders of the Jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophets, and Zechariah, son of Edom. They were just prophesying and people were prospering. And they were building. And building. You know, we could have gone continue praying. But your head is still quite deficient in understanding. So, the um, chapter 
7 verse 6. I want to end quickly. I want to. Chapter, it says that this Ezra came up from Babylon and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses. Say the law of Moses. It means the, it means the word of God. Which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his... Hey! The king granted him all his requests. Do you know what made it happen? That's what I want you to come to. According to the hand of the Lord, of his God upon him. If there's anything you need, you need the hand of God upon you. It says, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 7, and it shall come to pass when all these things happen. Do as the occasion demands. For God is... Gee, watch this, watch this. Do as the occasion demands. Why? For God is with you. When God is with you, there are things you have to do. Do it. Do it. Don't be afraid. Do it. For God is with you. Don't sit down feeling sorry for yourself. Wasting of your destiny. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Do as the occasion demands. Why? Because the hand of God is upon you. God is with you. God is, I'm prophesying. God is with you. 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 Shout amen. Do as the occasion demands. After this service, do as the, break that relationship. For God is with you. Break it. Unsubscribe. Call him and apologize. Call her and apologize. Do it. As the occasion, no God is talking to you. Do it. As the occasion, the occasion demands that action. The occasion demands that action. Do it. Release that money. Pay that tight. Do it. Don't say next week. Do it as the occasion demands. Because God is with you. 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 The last verse so I can finish. Chapter 7, verse 27. Ah, when I saw it today, I said, this one has done something to me. Yeah. Verse 27 and 28 says that, Blessed be the God of our fathers who has put such a thing in the heart, in the king's heart, to beautify the house of the God. Can you imagine? God put it in somebody's heart so that the assignment he has given to you, you will be able to do it. God! He can make people have a dream and see you in their dreams. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. God can do that. Yeah. He put it in the heart yes. of the king so that a house, a church can be built. Yeah. Just the king said, you know, he got, and he was working for it. But look at the next verse, verse 28. And he extended mercy to me before the king. Ah. So, so, so uh, ma, you know what God did? God put it in the heart of the king. Mm -hmm. But you need the king. It's human beings God uses. Yeah. So when you go to the king, at the same time, even though this is what the king wanted to do for God, you are the one to do it. So the king just had mercy. God made you also find mercy. He extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes. So I was encouraged. At, watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you don't need you don't need bad people around the king who don't like you. Yeah, they, it will make a difference. People around the pastor must also like you. Yeah. People around your boss must also like you. Don't say I don't care. So I was encouraged as the hand of the Lord my God. Ah, you see this thing is the hand of God. It's the hand of God. When the hand of God is on you, he moves the heart of Artaxerxes or Cyrus or Dyrus. When the hand of God is upon you, he makes the chief princes also like you. He makes the counselors, the, those who counsel the king will also like you. When the hand of God is upon your life, he will, he will ex, God will extend mercy to you in the sight of the king. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. 
Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.